Hello, in this video, we're going to go through the solutions for these three programming challenges. Uh, these three challenges are for the Learn Swift for Beginners video series. So you can go ahead and go to this page, which I'll link to in the description below. Um, and then you, you can learn Swift through these videos and then you can try your hand at these challenges. And then finally, this video is for the solution for these three challenges. Okay, so let's start with challenge number one, the lost animal challenge. I downloaded the starter code already, so let me unzip it on my desktop and let me open it up. So just to remind you what we're supposed to do here, we're supposed to create a function that is going to search through these two arrays for a specific piece of text. If it is in either array, we return true. If it's in neither array, we return false. Okay, so let's try this out and create a function called find animal and this guy returns a boolean which is true or false and then for the parameter name i'm just going to call it animal to find it's a string so that's what we have to pass in and there are a couple of different ways to do this i'll show you both so way number one is we look through both arrays individually so we're going to say for animal in array one and that's going to loop through each animal in array one and we're going to do a comparison if animal is equal equals to animal to find remember we use double equal sign because the single equal sign is for assignment and not equality um, if it is a match if we find it then let's just return true and as soon as you use this return keyword, it exits the function. So we don't have to worry about any other code um, below that. Okay, and we're going to say, you know, it's going to loop through array one looking for animal to find. If it can't find it, it's going to exit this loop, right? And then we have the second loop. We're going to use animal again, this parameter. But this time we're going to look through array number two. And we can use the same kind of variable here for this for loop because um, these are in different scopes. So this parameter that we declared here, when you refer to animal, it's referring, you know, within this for loop, it's referring to the items in here. Inside this for loop, it's referring to uh, animals in here. So I can do the same thing here. If animal is equal to animal to find, that and finally if it goes through both arrays and it can't find it at the end we have to return false that means it couldn't find it in either array otherwise you know if it did find it it would return and it wouldn't execute anything below that so you can test this out you can say something like uh, find animal pass in dog I know that's in there so it returns true let's try snake it also returns true now let's try sake which uh, is not found sake if you haven't had it before it's a uh, japanese it's alcohol pretty much okay so just uh, one more thing i want to point out is if you want to ignore case what you can do is you can use a string function here and you can lower case them both first so you're comparing both versions lowercase and then this will effectively ignore case so i can search for capital s snake and it will still find it because this comparison uh, you're making both of them lowercase first and then you are comparing them okay so um, another way to write this function uh, which may be easier depending on how you see it is you can combine array one and array two into a single array first and then do the searching. So I can do something like this. I can say let array three equals array one plus array two. And that'll actually create a new array with all of the items. And so I don't need to search both indiv uh, individually. I can just search for array three. So that makes our code a little more compact. It has the same effect, but again, uh, you 
I don't think I showed you this in the lessons above, so I don't know if you would have known how to do that. But either way is correct, right? Okay, moving on. Let's tackle challenge number two. Now this one actually will be uh, pretty easy to do. So in this one, uh, we have an add function where we pass in a piece of text. I wanted you to keep track of it inside this body array and then in this go function to print it all out. Now, uh, th again, there are a couple of ways to do this. So let me show you um, the longer way first. So uh, in the add function, all you needed to do was append. Right? So append the parameter to body right here. And then in go, what you might have done was uh, construct a string to print out. So let's say uh, var print string equals, and then you would do empty string, and then for um, for s in body, you might do something like print string pl uh, plus equals s. So you would build up that string, and then you'd finally you would print uh, you would print the print string. And then down here, the output you get is hello, which is the expected output, right? Uh, well, one way that you can do to kind of shortcut all of this, well, shortcut all of this, is you can do something called um, using the function joined in this array. So let me show you what that looks like. So var print string body dot joined. So this function will actually just join all the elements into a string like that. So print string like that in one line has the same effect, right? You can shorten it even further by just putting that into the print statement like that. And the bonus marks, what does it say here? Custom initializer. So this is just practice to create an init function. So init uh, starting string. You would do the same thing here. You just append the starting string in this custom initializer. And then down here, you can no longer declare it like that. So we can declare it like high, and then you would still get, hopefully, hi, hello. I think it's it's running right now if you look at the status bar up here. Sometimes it takes, it takes quite a while. Let me just stop it here. Press stop, press run again. Okay, unfortunately, this playground may be uh, may not be working right now. It's not fully running our code here. So I'm going to move on and I'm just going to close this for now and we're going to work on the third challenge. Okay, so this challenge wanted you to practice using dictionaries. Um, and then we had to implement each of these these functions here with these kind of different scenarios so in the search by title, uh, we wanted to practice searching through a dictionary. So uh, basically, given a title, we wanted to search through the catalog dictionary to find out if the title existed in the catalog. But it's not quite that straightforward because the title is actually inside this book object, which is the value. Um, and then these are the keys. All right, so we need to search through the dictionary using this tuple here. Um, let's call this book ID and let's call this the book in catalog. So if this doesn't look familiar to you, I would recommend just looking at the dictionary lesson again. So here we say uh, if, if book dot title is equal to the title that's passed in, you would return, well, you wouldn't return anything yet because we have to check. Check uh, now that we found the book, 
check that check if it's available and we have this other checked out books um, dictionary here so we can pass in um, I think this one this one is by ID the book ID relating to the person so if a person took out the book we would have a key value pair that would be the book ID and the person who took it out so all we need to do is check if checked out books we pass in a book ID uh, we got it right here in this tuple up here so if sorry this is a dictionary so we use square brackets and I basically want to see if this key exists in checked out books I'm not sure what I was typing there checked out books okay <laughs> book ID okay if this is nil that means that book hasn't been checked out and so we return the string what do we return available okay else I don't care who checked it out well actually I do care because I have to return checked out by name so the name of the person who checked it out and so we would do something like let person equal checked out books book ID and then I would say return checked out by plus person dot name so I'm appending the name to checked out by and then finally if it didn't find this book in the catalog it would come all the way down here and we would say not in catalog okay there's an error here okay so um, right here it's basically saying that this statement w may not return a person object but I know that it does because I just checked up here that it's uh, if it's nil it's gonna come in here if it's not nil which means that there is a person it's gonna come in here so because um, what gets returned from the dictionary is an optional you know and it could be nil that's why we have to unwrap it so I can go do something like that and basically tell the playground that I know there's a person so I'm gonna force unwrap it and then I'm gonna call this property on uh, that person object so that's how you you do this function we have a couple more to do okay so checked out this function adds to the checked out books dictionary and so if it's already checked out we return an error if it is not checked out we return successfully checked out and if it's not in the catalog the book doesn't exist so why don't we do this case first because if the book doesn't even exist in the catalog then we just return out of this function so let's say if uh, catalog and then we pass in the book ID which we have up here as a parameter if this is nil then we return book doesn't exist right if it does exist then we move on so if uh, checked out books book ID if this is not nil that means this book is checked out right so then we return error book is already checked out else return successfully checked out but we don't just return the string we actually have to add this key value pair to checked out books so for book ID equals the person trying to check it out which is up here so these are the three cases either the book doesn't exist in the catalog or if it does exist then you know is it checked out right because if it's if it exists in the checked out books dictionary already you know it's not nil then it's been checked out if it is nil then we add that person and the book ID we add that key value pair into checked out books and then we return successfully checked out 
uh, here we don't really need this one and it's not going to complain because it's you know we have this if else statement it's either going to return this one or this one so this function xcode um, it knows that it will definitely return a string so it's not going to complain check in so again uh, book doesn't exist right we check that first if catalog book ID is nil then return book doesn't exist uh, now we say if checked out books they can't check in a book that hasn't been checked out so let's check for this book ID if it is equal to nil that means that this book wasn't in this checked out dictionary in the first place then we return this error copy paste else if it does exist in there then we simply get rid of it All right we kind of check it back in and to do that we simply for the book ID we assign it nil and that basically uh, removes that key value pair and then we return successfully checked in okay and again we don't need this return statement at the end because either it's going to return this one or return this one for this else uh, if else branch so that's basically it and again my playground doesn't seem to be running so what I'm going to do I'm going to close it let's just try to restart Xcode here sometimes that will do the trick and let me launch this playground again and hopefully it runs this time launching simulator I'm glad to see that status bar message change so hopefully we're gonna see something in the output soon alright so now we are in business so let's check this out here just expected output is available the next one is successfully checked out next one is checked out by curious George next one is book is already checked out next one is can't check in a book because it hasn't been checked out and then successfully checked in and then successfully checked out so all of our output here matches the expected output after all of these statements and we can consider this done so hopefully um, you're able to learn from these challenges Please give me some feedback on what you liked and what you didn't like and how I can improve them for the future because I do plan on doing more challenges. I think it's a fun and interactive thing to do. And next time, um, I think I'll try to give out some prizes if we can manage that. And even if you've watched this video already, I still suggest that you give it a try because, um, you know, try and do it from memory because it'll still help you practice your finger memory in learning keywords and the syntax and stuff like that without having to memorize any keywords. And then be sure to let me know and I'll add you to the wall of fame. If you want to download these playgrounds with the solutions, just look in the link below this video or in the description if you're watching on YouTube um, and then you can download them from there. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.